Hello, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at quality of service, otherwise known as QoS. Specifically within QoS, we are going to be taking a closer look at what is known as class-based weighted fair queuing, which is otherwise known as CBWFQ. So one of the first things we need to know about class-based weighted fair queuing is that it is a form of congestion management. So that means when the link becomes congested or saturated, if we have class-based weighted fair queuing set up correctly, we can use this as a form of providing a minimum amount of bandwidth to specified queues or class classes that we specify with the class map statement. So again, class-based weighted fair queuing is going to allow us to reserve bandwidth to a queue, which equals a class mass. I'm sorry, a class map that we specify. We can have up to 64 queues. And so what I'm going to do is before I talk a little more about CVWFQ, we'll go ahead and just tell you what we have a pretty simple lab in this case we just have two routers router 1 and router 2 we have the 172.16.12.0 network in between them we have on R1 we have a loopback 0 which is 1.1.1.0 slash 24 and R2 we have a loopback 0 which is 2.2.2.0 slash 24 we have layer 3 reachability across our network topology we are using OSPF process 1. So the first thing let's go ahead and enable OSPF. So we'll go under R1 and do a router OSPF 1 and we'll do a network statement for our loopback interface and then also for our directly connected interface towards router 2 which is 172.16.12.1 So again both routers, all interfaces in area 0. So let's go to router 2. We'll get OSPF configured on router 2 and then we'll go ahead and jump right into our class-based weighted fair queuing configuration. Again 12.2 is the IP address of the directly connected interface towards router 1. So we can see that we already have an adjacency change with OSPF. It has come up. We can verify that if we do a show IP OSPF neighbor. We see that we have a neighbor relationship with router 2 from router 1's perspective. If we do a show IP route, we can now see the loop back off of router 2. And we can ping this. We can make sure we have full reachability in our network if we source this from our own loop back. And you can see that we have reachability. So again, the interfaces between R1 and R2 